So I was on the previous panel. Anyways, so we're talking about production ready LLM applications in this talk. Um, the retrieval stuff is all in the latter half of the slides. I figured since Elon was here talking about fine tuning, I would talk a little bit about like fine tuning and rag in the first part. But I'll probably link the um, I'll link the slides like in the um, in like a channel or something so that you guys can take a look. Cool. RAG. Uh, I think we already talked about how many of you guys like knew what RAG was, but it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, for those of you who don't know, you know, language models um, are phenomenal. They are really good at reasoning, but they have a knowledge cutoff date, um, especially for like ChatGPT. You know, it was trained, uh, I think it was like 2021 or something. And so I think for every developer, I think the key question here is how do you best augment language models with your own private data, right? Like your PDFs, APIs, vector DBs, SQL databases. Uh, this company, Lamadex, has been around um, as a company for about like five months and as a project has been around for about like 10 months. And so since the early days, this is pretty much the key question that we've been thinking about. So a really brief bit on Llama Index itself, it's a data framework for LLM applications. So it helps you build LLM apps over your data, and there's really like two main categories that it solves. One is how do you ingest data into some storage system, like a vector database like Pinecone. And the second piece is how do you actually retrieve and query your data, right? And you can do this with like standard RAG techniques, you can do this with agents, but all our abstractions are kind of fall roughly along those two categories. And besides that, we have like structured outputs, we have evals, we have a bunch of other stuff that's auxiliary. So the first step is like you want to load your data from somewhere. So we do it through Llama Hub, which uh, is kind of like this uh, community-driven repository over like 100 different data loaders for you to load in data uh, from different sources into your application. The next step is you basically kind of create this uh, novel like ETL like pipeline, right? You take this data, you parse it, you chunk it, you split it, and then you put it into a vector DB. You might want to add tags, you might want to add metadata, uh, and then this eventually goes into the downstream storage. And then the final point is that you want to do retrieval and synthesis with an LLM, right? You want to do some sort of retrieval mechanism from your data and then since synthesize it with, uh, with the language model. And then that's kind of how you get back your final response. And if you want to add sources or anything else, like that's uh, possible too with Llama Index. So for those of you who, for instance, are just starting out, you know, if you're using Llama Index, you can basically get started building QA over your docs in like, you know, three lines of code. Uh, just do a simple directory reader dot load data. That's the load part. Uh, vector store index from documents. That's the parsing and the uh, kind of like uh, indexing part. And then there's the query engine dot query. What did the author do growing up? Um, and then that's like the query side. Okay. So I kind of swapped the slides a bit, but okay, we talked a little bit about RAG. Now let's talk about fine tuning and how that applies to RAG. So with fine tuning, you can basically choose to fine tune um, the embeddings model, right? Like during this stage, when you actually load stuff into a vector DB, you basically add a bunch of embeddings. Um, and then like you can also fine tune the language model itself, which is used during uh, synthesis. So one aspect that is interesting to think about, especially when we're talking about fine tuning the, the embeddings model, which we haven't really chatted about yet, is we want to first like, okay, how do we get a synthetic data set, right? How do we just get a training data to actually fine tune your embedding model? Now, why do we want to fine tune the embedding model in the first place? It's because, you know, when you create these embedding representations of raw text and you use pre-trained models to do so, a lot of times it might be imperfect. It might be an inadequate representation of your data, especially for the types of queries that you want to ask. So shifting the latent space a bit, shifting the embedding points does help to improve performance and is generally a thing that people do. So Joe from uh, Vespa, you know, a lead engineer was on our webinar and he basically said, okay, you can actually generate a synthetic data set from your existing data, right, uh, using LLMs. So given just any piece of unstructured text, tell the LLM like GPT-4 to generate a question from that context. Now you have the input, which is a question, and you have the ground truth, which is that piece of context, like a text chunk that you have. Now, given this synthetic data set, now you basically have ground truth, right? You have the question, you have the piece of context. You mix it with the rest of the corpus, and you can basically train this. You can, for instance, have a positive label be, you know, this question with this context. You can have a negative label be this question and any other piece of context from your corpus. And you can basically fine tune an embedding model off of that. 
So the first piece is you can actually directly fine tune like a sentence transformers model, right? This is a hugging face uh, sentence transformers model. You can basically do that directly. Um, and you can do that, you know, sentence transformers has like uh, functions for you to just train stuff. Uh, you abstract that away somewhat with kind of like um, our um, uh, fine tuning abstractions that basically allow it to make it very easy for you to fine tune a model and plug it into the rest of your rag system. The other option, though, is you know if you're using any other embedding model that's not sentence transformers, you could just fine tune a black box adapter, and I'll tell you a little bit about what that means. So, the first piece here is directly fine tuning uh, sentence transformers, which I talked about, but there is some caveats. Um, one is you can only really fine tune sentence transformers because you know it's a open model that exposes gradients, so you can basically directly use the library to fine tune the existing model. Um, you know, with something like OpenAI embeddings, obviously it's a black box model, so you, it's not going to expose gradients, so you can't actually fine tune it, at least right now. Um, and the other part is that once you actually fine tune these embeddings, you actually have to re index and re embed your documents. So this is intractable if your document corpus is large, right? If you have like a billion documents, they all have a certain embedding right now. All of a sudden you fine tune this embedding, then you're gonna have to re-index all billion documents. Uh, so that generally speaking is gonna be very expensive and, and slow. So basically, I think Joe actually kind of inspired us with this idea, um, but there's this idea that you can basically fine tune some sort of adapter on the query and just keep the document embeddings like frozen. And so this is basically just some sort of like transform layer, right, that only applies to queries. Um, and so if you, for instance, like embed, uh, oh, I guess it's actually kind of faded. Um, anyhow, so, so this is like the query, and then this is the document. If you pass both through an embedding model, you can just like do a linear transformation of the embedding over here, uh, and then before you actually do the dot product to measure similarity. And so we just put out a blog post about this like two days ago, but th this basically allows you to not have to re-embed any of your documents. Uh, this works on top of any embedding model, right? Because it's just like a linear transform on top of like any embedding that you have. And then this will improve retrieval rag performance. Fine tuning LLMs, um, Elon is gonna know way more about this than, than I do, but you know, we're, we're still in the early stages. Um, so how much can fine, -tune, uh, fine tuning complement replace retrieval? That's a million dollar question. Um, some initial stabs at that from our side, you know, we try to use OpenAI to distill GPT-4 to GPT-3.5, um, as Elon was mentioning, uh, for RAG and also for agents. So for RAG, what you can do is you can use a similar principle of like synthetic query generation, um, run it through GPT-4, like use an LM to come up with a bunch of questions from text, run that through a GPT-4 RAG pipeline, log the results, and then use those results as a training data set to actually fine tune GPT-3.5. And then you can do some evaluation uh, modules. You can also do this to distill GPT-4 uh, uh, GPT for, for agents, right, for GPT-3.5. Um, if you've ever built agents with GPT-3.5, you know that they're pretty unreliable. Um, they don't really work super well. But it turns out if you just train it to imitate the chain of thought loop that GPT-4 does, it starts doing actually uh, better. So what we did was we started logging the intermediate chain of thought calls that GPT-4 made use that as trading data, and it turns out actually uh, does better, right? So here's just some example data points. Cool. How much time do I have? All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So this is, you know, um, the first part of the talk. If you guys are interested, I'll send the slides out, um, but, yeah, there's a link to this. Cool. So um, now back to RAG. Um, uh, I mean, this, the fine-tuning part was also about RAG, but this is like actual RAG. So LLM map use cases, right? Thinking about like LLM maps over your data. So we have this like 2D spectrum from like passive to interactive, as well as from simple reasoning to more complex and multi-step reasoning. For like passive stuff, it's basically very simple use cases like summarization, translation, and then all the way to something that's more interactive and complex. It's basically like conversational agents, stuff that is multi-step, uh, stuff that the user interacts with. And I think our core thesis here is that you know, assuming you're building RAG systems, like data management and orchestration matters quite a bit as you go down, uh, down uh, like down into the right in terms of complexity. Um, I kind of or described this during the panel itself, but here's like what I call the naive RAG stack for building a QA system. You take a doc, you chunk it up, throw it into a vector database, right? Split it up into even chunks. Um, just, they're just raw text. You embed them, put it into a vector DB. And then you find the top K most similar chunks. But the issue with this is that for anyone kind of building a chatbot that actually depends on RAG, 
The most common reason for this is bad retrieval. So if the retrieval results are bad, there's just no way that LLM can synthesize a proper response, right? Unless actually, you know, fine tuned over that data or something. But disregarding that part, like, it can't actually understand how to answer the question without hallucinating if it doesn't have the right context in the prompt. So how do you fix bad retrieval? Or what are the reasons for bad retrieval? One is like, if you just look at the, the chunks that you get by evenly splitting it, it's a very primitive design. You're like splitting like sentences, you know, you're, they're just cutting it off without really any knowledge of what the document is about. Um, depending on the type of document, you might be splitting in the middle of like a section or a heading uh, or in the middle of like a function call, right, if it's code. So also like, um, so you basically need better parsing, you need better structure, and this feeds into better retrieval algorithms for the data. Skip this for now. So basically, you know, one lesson here is uh, improve the way you define like state. Really think about the data decisions that you make, and not just the retrieval algorithm or the LLM. So you know, here are some techniques for better performing RAG. Um, it, one basic option is you should inject metadata. Uh, think about doing that for every piece of text. Um, this naturally feeds into uh, vector databases that support metadata filters, like Pinecone, Weave, others. Um, but this also feeds into the embedding too. You can actually have the metadata actually bias the embedding for a kind of better retrieval, right, if you do it properly. Uh, and this also feeds into LLM synthesis. If the language model has access to not just the raw piece of text, but also additional context in the metadata, it can do more stuff with it, right? So for instance, it can add page numbers to PDFs if that's actually in the metadata of the chunks. And then the other piece here is you can use like LLMs for stuff like auto automatic uh, metadata extraction. Um, because defining metadata by yourself can sometimes be a pain. So you can do something like reverse hide where given a piece of context, you actually you know, like generate a set of questions that this piece of context could answer. Okay, last thing I'll just talk about really quick is decoupling the embeddings from raw text chunks. Um, there's a few things in here, one of which is embedding fine tuning, but generally speaking, if you just embed like a raw piece of text and with a pre-trained model, uh, it tends to not work as well for retrieval. Um, and so some stuff you can do here is basically um, see if you can, yeah, like be a little bit more creative with how you embed references to an existing piece of data. You can embed the summary of the data and link it to a document that has the raw chunks. Um, you can embed uh, at the sentence level. We actually found a simple trick, right? You can do it yourself. Just embed the sentences, and then during synthesis, just expand that window to feed the entire thing into the LLM. Retrieval tends to do better on more granular pieces of information. Uh, and, and embedding you know, references. This is basically what I talked about, but kind of in, in another graph, right? And, and just like think about how to decouple what you embed and retrieve from what you actually feed to the language model. There's a bunch more stuff here, but I'm out of time, so thanks.